Hey everybody, it's your girl Angie. Welcome back to Kiss My Cheeks TV. Let's jump into Big Brother. This is the episode that came on last night. It wasn't something that I watched in its entirety. It wasn't what I was expecting. Like I thought we would get at least the first two parts of the HOH. I thought we would get not the pre-jury. Usually the pre-jury comes on finale night. But I thought we would at least get the jury seeing Christmas be evicted and getting the reaction to that. So I guess Wednesday is going to be good. Let me tell you all about tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be on Charles Warren's YouTube Live again. We're doing a Big Brother finale party. We're going to go live. I want to say maybe 30 minutes to an hour before Big Brother comes on. We're going live to talk about our predictions, what we think may happen, what we're expecting to see, who we're rooting for, all that good stuff. We're going to do it before. We're going to have drinks. I might do margaritas for Devon. I might do some crown and Sprite, but that usually gets me to write too fast. I might just do some mellow Moscato. We will see. I, I, I got to decide <laughs> and go to the liquor store tomorrow. But you all come. We're going to watch Big Brother. And then directly after the finale ends, we're going live again to talk about everything we just seen. So it's going to be two lives in one night. Both lives will be on Charles Warren's channel. Um, I probably will do a recap of the finale for my channel, but it might not go up until Thursday. So that's what's going on tomorrow. Please join us. It's going to be a good time. Make y'all some drinks too. Let's have a good time. Let's get a little buzz and go live before and then let's be good and right <laughs> and talk about what happened after. Like, I'm back to working from home, y'all. I know I'm talking about everything but Big Brother, but I ain't got too much to say today. I'm back at home. Unfortunately, we had some more people test positive in my building. So they was like, I'm tired of playing with y'all. Everybody go home. Everybody go home. Y'all go work from home and telework until we tell you to come back. So I had to, I wish I could pan my camera, my, my makeup room a little bit junky, but I had to create a whole office space in my makeup room. I brought home my docking station, both monitors, my keyboard. Like I brought home everything. And I said, I'm just going to sit here. Okay. I, I got to be comfortable if I'm going to work full time from home. But anyway, Anyway, let's get into Big Brother. Like I said, I watched, it didn't give me what I was looking for. So I feel like a lot of what I'm looking for will happen tomorrow. What it did give me is the perspective of the final three. And let me tell you, my mind has completely changed on who I think should be a winner. I wrote down notes as they were telling each person had their own little confessional and their own little edit of how they think the season went for them. I'm going to tell you right now, off top, Nicole's edit, what do they call that? Revisionist history, where people remember things the way they want it to be seen. Like, the way Nicole spoke about how she feels what happened in the game and why she thinks she should win the game is complete BS trash to me. But I'm going to get to Nicole because Nicole went third, so we're going to re read Nicole last. Um, First up was Enzo. Enzo is someone who I completely changed my mind on his st standing in the game. First off, Enzo did have a great social game. Everyone loved to talk to Enzo. Everyone said Enzo was hilarious. He was the BFF of the house. That means a lot. That means a lot when it comes to giving somebody $500,000. Because you, I don't care how they say, I ain't going to be bitter. I ain't going to be bitter. I don't, I don't care what nobody say. It's easier to give $500,000 to somebody you like versus someone who may have played a better game. I don't know your point of view, but you don't like. That's just on period. And, and Angie, being the way I am, I don't care. You could have played an A++++ plus 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 game. You could have been Derek and Vanessa on 1,000. If I don't like your ass, I ain't voting for you. That's just me, period. But anyway... I had to go back and remember Enzo's social game and how much people really genuinely did like Enzo. Or they do like Enzo. I don't want to use past him. 
he first started talking about the root, the six six, the slicks. That damn alliance was is a tongue twister. The the slicks, y'all know them, and the two versions of the wise guys. Now I started rolling my eyes when he started talking about them at first. I was like, the root, yeah, him and Cody were Jersey boys, and they did hook up. Okay, then. He talked about the slicks. And I was like, we all know the slicks was fake as shit. So, eh, whatever. Roll my eyes at that. Then he started talking about the two versions of the wise guys, which ultimately that was Memphis's creation. And you snitched on them. You snitched on one of the versions. So, I don't even know why you mentioned that. But then my mind was blown. I don't know if I missed this in the live feeds or if I missed this in one of the episodes. I did not know that Cody and Tyler told Enzo about the telephone group. And Enzo knows that he was outside of the Power Alliance, but he's still sitting in the final three. He still knew how to maneuver on the outside of the Power Alliance to where they still got rid of Memphis, Christmas, Tyler, all of them. Who else did they get rid of? Memphis, Christmas, Tyler, Danny. They got rid of all of those people. And Enzo was sitting in the final three. Okay, that is that is a big statement that if he is sitting there in, on finale night, that swayed me because I didn't think he knew about it. Like, I didn't think Enzo knew that that was a point he needed to make in a final two speech. So I was like, oh... Yeah, okay, Enzo. Okay. And it opens my eyes up even further to know that Enzo knew about the telephone group. And Danny voted put up in against Tyler. I'm a, I'm gonna read Nicole on that a little bit later, don't worry. Danny put up in over Enzo, who Ian and Danny and Nicole, and somebody else, and I want to say Cody, had a Final Four. They were working together. And Danny was so, Danny was more concerned about Cody, not Enzo, but so concerned about Cody that she didn't even put up someone on the outside of who she was working with. Like, I, I got to give it to Enzo. I got to give it to Enzo. Enzo says some more things about yeah, we know Enzo threw some comps, but he said, I knew to win a couple of comps because I didn't want to be perceived as a floater. I was like, damn, am I rooting for Enzo to win? Like, am I really seeing it for Enzo in the win? Like, I really see it now. And of course, Enzo never hit the block. So after I saw Enzo's little segment, I was like, oh, okay. Now, unfortunately, y'all, let's go ahead and talk because if y'all ain't a live feeder, y'all about to get spoiled. Read me in the comments if I spoil you. I I'm about to just tell you. Y'all already know Nicole won part one. I already told y'all in the last episode, production was not going to let Cody <laughs> get shut out of the final HOH. So Cody won part two. So now it's up to Nicole or Cody to win this HOH and bring Enzo. I still feel like if Enzo is brought to the final two, I, I feel like Enzo can win this game. If if he if he can put the words out there the way he got me to change my mind last night, oh, Enzo could win this. And I'm now I am now officially rooting for Enzo. Okay, let's move on to Cody. Cody was smart enough to say <laughs> that no, was it the Jim Pr was it the pre-jury that said his best game move was winning the first HOH? I think Cody said it too, that his best game move was winning that first HOH. That was a power position. I said, that was nobody but production. I'm twisting over my words. I'm so mad at it. That was nobody but production. <sighs> Go back and watch the clip. Y'all all remember when the first HOH went down. The other people were not allowed to come from behind that wall into the wobbly mushrooms or whatever they were stepping on. Stop wobbling. So they would so the people wouldn't know which path to take. But when Cody came out, Cody came out like that. His things were still wobbling. That's why he did the shit in six seconds. Couldn't nobody do that shit in six seconds. 
moving on from that, it is what it is. That was all the way in week one. Then he was talking about all his alliances. And I said, you mean Derek's pregame alliances for you? You mean that's what was your strong suit? Uh, okay, let's give that to Derek. Because we all know Derek was the one who called everybody and got Cody a pregame alliance. He did have a lot of final twos. Okay. If anything, that's going to hurt you come finale night. Because if you click Nicole in the final two... She might not vote for your ass. If you clip Enzo and he been riding so hard for this route, Enzo might not vote for your ass. So, mm, mm, I don't know. You might shoot yourself in the foot. Um, He's talking about this power alliance. Da, 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 da. If we're going to give creating the telephone group any credit, if we are going to just, in our mindset, nobody pre-gamed, no one called each other before the show, Derek did not help Cody. If, if, we're, gonna, if we're just going to say facts are facts and we aren't going to believe any of that, this is a pure game. Everyone got into the house and started the game. If we are going to go on that notion, the telephone group, all that credit goes to Memphis. Cody, you had nothing to do with that. Memphis is the one who created the telephone group, if we're going to ride it out like that, okay? So, he was a comp beast. We can't take that from Cody. Cody did win a lot of HOHs and a lot of vetoes. I know I yell production a lot when it comes to Nicole and Cody, but I ain't going to take that from him. He was a comp, comp beast. He said he won seven competitions. That's great. Congratulations to you. He started talking about his social game, and then that's when my eyes start rolling. That's when my eyes start rolling. I was like, social game? Like, Cody has a very, how can I say this? He has, he has an Angie face. He has an Angie face. If you talking to him and he's disinterested, it's written all over his face. It's like, like, I am very much that way and I have to be very conscious, especially if I'm, I'm like at work or on a Zoom call. You know, I have to really reel in my face, really reel it in to make, because side note, let me tell y'all, I probably shouldn't even say this, but it's, it's a little side note. I remember one year, one year, I wasn't really reprimanded, but... I had to have it be brought to my attention that my facials, you know, people thought I was mean or rude or like they said I was mean to them based on my facials and it was brought to my attention at work. And so I really had to be like, okay, Angie, because, you know, I, I'm a supervisor. I am in a management position, so I do have to no. People said I was unapproachable. They said I was unapproachable. I'm not really unapproachable. Sometimes at work, when you are in a management position and you just have a lot of shit to do, I be in the zone. I be in the zone or somebody might have just called me and got on my nerve and I don't mean to take it out on you. And sometimes it's written on your face. And I, I want you to approach me. I want you to ask me questions. I ha I'm telling y'all, that's Cody. Like, it's written on his face. And sometimes I can understand that. Sometimes you just can't. I can imagine being in the house 24-7. You forget to control your face. It is what it is. <laughs> I said all of that <laughs> to say thumbs down on Cody and his social game. And, mm -mm, mm -mm. Maybe in the beginning. Because you saw they had to go all the way back to Janelle. All the way back to Janelle to talk about his social game. Because I'm telling you, after, probably after that, it was the face. But moving on, moving on, moving on. One thing I will give to, to, to Cody, yes, he was never on the block like Enzo. And two, he was the power person in the house. He was the person, no one wanted to be upset. No one made, wanted to make a move because they didn't want to upset Cody. No one wanted to interfere with Cody's game. Everyone had to run everything by Cody. 
I do say Cody can still win the game if no one, well, if Nicole doesn't clip him at final two. But <sighs> he went through this whole segment of learning his lesson from the Derek loss. But then at the Enzo segment, I was like, who should he, like, if he wins it, can he beat Nicole? Can he beat Enzo? Excuse me. I don't know. But let's move on to Friends because I, I, I told you I didn't change my mind. I'm, I'm rooting for Enzo now. And I said, Friends, ugh, my eyes start rolling automatically. Automatically. And I already told you about her. Well, I hope it's revisionist history. Is that how y'all say it? Revisionist history? I already told y'all about that. Friends was talking about <clears throat> she was this target she had to maneuver through the game as a previous winner and i was like girl you weren't on nobody's radar <laughs> she was talking about, i was on everybody's radar i was like who's and then they started to show a clip and i believe that was a joke <laughs> from that clip of memphis i'm like girl nobody was talking about putting you on the block nobody you can't find a clip anywhere you saw that that's why they only showed one clip and i believe that was a joke Anyway, you can't find any other clip of anybody talking about they're scared of Nicole being in the house. Even in the beginning, when Enzo said he didn't want no winners in the house, he was only talking about Ian. Enzo was only scared of Ian. So don't get it twisted. No one was scared of Nicole. She was not a threat. There isn't a clip that Big Brother can put on my TV screen where anybody... Challenge me, um, CBS. Challenge me. I don't think there's a clip of anyone saying Nicole is a threat. We need to get her out, but she's in the telephone group. It ain't. It ain't nowhere. You can't find it. Moving on. Um, I already said that. <clears throat> Nicole talks about um working with Ian, and I, the eyes were rolling. I'm telling my eyes roll so hard through this segment. I was like, you couldn't even keep Ian in the game. And even when Ian left the game, you weren't a threat. <sighs> and then she started talking about her win. And she was like, what did she say? Then she started talking about Janelle and how everyone in the house was getting her targets out. And I'm like, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. You can't show me anywhere. Any where pull up the clips you can't show me anywhere where nicole went week to week to week saying i need janelle out the house i need caser out the house i need david out the house i need kevin i need bailey i need davon nicole's actually trying to save some of these people and she couldn't even get her alliance to save any of them <sighs> it's laughable like no one was you, Nicole, if you ever watch this when Big Brother is over, I hope you see it. Nicole, you had, yes, you had a beef with Janelle, but you did not get Janelle out the house. No one was concerned about you beefing with Janelle. No one gave a damn. No one gave a damn. Janelle being a great player that she is, Janelle being the comp beast that she is, Janelle having the credit, the BB queen, other people have called her the BB queen. I'm, she can have it. I ain't going to go there. Her being the BB queen, I actually like Rachel, but it, it, moving on. Her being the BB queen, everyone coming in the house, as you call it, fangirling on Janelle is what got Janelle kicked out early janelle was gonna go home early even if you could have came in the house being her bff as she thought that you all were since you invited her to a wedding you a fake bitch that's what she is but angie move on angie move on janelle's position in the game her history the threat level that you think you had is what janelle actually had and that's what got her kicked out of the game you and her having a beef is just some personal shit that had nothing to do with nothing 
And Kaser, he just had to go too because he's linked to Janelle. But Kaser is a good game player too. I mean, we ain't going to go there. Moving on. Moving on. I said, number one, your biggest mistake was not evicting Tyler when you had the chance. You could have persuaded your BFF. You could have tied up that vote. You could have tied up that vote. You could have persuaded your best friend, Danny, to vote out Tyler over Ian. And you probably, you would have got credit for that. And you would have something to say as your big move in the game. But as of right now, you have none. And then she talking about, I was a winner and I beat David. And I'm like, girl, girl. Yes, you were on the block with David, but Memphis was the HOH. And we already know why David was evicted. We ain't going to go back there. Let's move on. I was on the block with Danny and I'm a winner. And they still evicted Danny over me. I'm like, girl, Danny was a threat. She was a threat. If you go back to my very first BB All-Stars video, I always said I had Danny as the one picked to win this. Before Danny started playing this season, I really liked Danny. Like, she was always one of my favorites of BB women who have played. So, when I saw Danny on this, Danny was my winner pick of this season. Now, I started to dislike Danny a little bit this after seeing how she was acting a little bit this season. But <laughs> Danny was a threat. <laughs> Girl, she's like, and. I won a HOH in week 10. And I said, bitch, I could have won HOH in week 10. You weren't playing, but against four people. <laughs> but against four people, you had a 25% chance. My ass, my big ass could have got on that balance beam and won that shit, especially if one person was throwing it. So now you had a 33.3% .3 chance. And then two people after the 24th ball then drop their shit out the basket. <laughs> Hell, I could have won that shit. I could have won that. And we ain't going back to BB Comics. So moving on. She said, everyone thinks that Paul was robbed. And I said, bitch, he was. <laughs> he was. I blame Davon and I blame Natalie. So move on. And she was like, but I'm the best big brother player of all time. And I'm going to be the first two-time winner. I said, oh my God, the delusions. The delusions. I wrote on my paper really big, Nicole cannot win. I don't care. I don't care. Production, y'all got a little bit of time. The finale, not till tomorrow. Production, if you by chance happen to see this, if you ever wanted to throw something to Cody, throw it to him right now and tell him to cut Nicole because she just cannot win. I believe she might have an um, aneurysm or something. Don't say that. Don't say that. I take that back. I take that back. But her big head might just explode. Let's do something, you know, that's not could realistically happen. But I think her head really could explode like all that confetti they keep showing whenever they talk about her win. Because she is, she going to be too full of herself. Too full of herself. Nicole cannot win. She is someone who I do not want to win. But I feel like <clears throat> if Nicole is sitting in the final two and she cuts Cody, everyone's going to give her the win because she's the one who cut Cody. If Nicole is sitting in the final two, no. If Cody cuts Enzo, I don't know. We're going to revisit all this tomorrow with Charles because I got to really sit and think about all these scenarios. But at the end of the day, Nicole can't win. Like, I'm putting that in you. I, I don't care if Cody or Enzo wins. I cannot see a Franzo hopping around in that confetti talking about she the BB queen. She the best bitch. Ever. No, 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 ma'am. No, ma'am. CBS. Let's move on to the pre-jury. I ain't had too much to say. I didn't talk way <laughs> I'm going to talk way too much. But I, it, it's getting down to the end. And I do get excited about Big Brother as a whole. But anyway, let's talk about the pre-jury. First of all, they all look good. Janelle snatched. Face was beat. Keisha looked good. 
Casey looked good. Even the other Nicole Anthony, she got on my nerve a lot of bit. A lot of it. And and Bailey is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um Janelle called it. She said Nicole made it to the end because who the hell gonna waste their HOH on getting her weak ass out? I said, fingers were snapping. I said, yes, ma'am, Janelle. Yes. Ain't nobody wasting no HOH on Franzel. And so then they start talking about what was everyone's one mistake in the game that could have cost them the game. They said Cody had too many final twos, and that could lead to a bitter jury. <sighs> I don't think that's really a mistake because he really didn't have that many final twos. I think his only true final two was with Nicole, Memphis, and... What's her name? Enzo, his name. I'm sorry. I don't know. I, I, I think Cody didn't make a bold enough move. But he really didn't have to. Because, like, really, let's think about it. What could have been an extremely bold move of Cody's that we could say was like, wow, he really... Like, Cody really just was riding the train that was in motion he didn't have to do anything to sway the game left or right because it was already on the tracks to a cody win so why change anything i don't know let's so anyway they said friends was riding cody and she made no big moves and i 100 percent agree i cannot call a move that friends made and if she is sitting in the final two i hope i hope she don't even make it to the final two lord <sighs> Um, if she is sitting to the final in the final two, I would like to really hear her respond to that. And then they kind of skipped over Enzo, and I was like, Did y'all skip Enzo? <laughs> Kaser said that Cody's best game move was that first HOH. And I said, Yeah, production gave it to him. To me, and I talked to Charles about this before because Charles said he wanted to be on Big Brother, but now I think he said he wants to do Survivor. And so I think I could spoil it a little bit. Forgive me, Charles, if I ain't post say the strategy. But anyway, to me, the strategy on every season of Big Brother is to get that first HOH. The first HOH, unless you get caught up like Cody and have three people quit and a whole bunch of twists and you have to nominate half the house. <laughs> unless you get caught up like that. The first HOH is the power move of the season because everyone is coming to you with information, with, um, what's it called? Alliances, because no one wants to be the first boot. So everyone is coming to you. And it's usually whoever doesn't come to you <laughs> week one, them the two that got to go, or they just throw it on the first two people who bombed in that first HOH competition. They got to go up. So the first HOH is a very powerful HOH. I don't know why anyone would ever throw that first HOH. <clears throat> I I just don't get it. And 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 to me, all future Big Brother contestants. Week 1. Week 1, probably day 1, day 2. <clears throat> definitely by the time the nominations happen for week 1. If you are not set up in a group of six to eight people, you are on the outside of the house. And you need to figure out quickly who else is not in that six to eight and form a group. Realize you are the outsiders, you are not the cool kids, and you need to band together and say, fuck them cool kids, it's going to be us versus them, and get the season popping. That's just a little advice from Angie. Moving on, let's, let's hurry up and wrap this up. Um, I think that was it. I said Nicole A is doing a lot of advocating for Nicole F. And I said, bitch, shut up. <laughs> like, she was like, oh, I want to advocate for Nicole. We do have the same name. And then, then, then. I was like, girl, shut up. You are making no points, no valid points. The only thing people truly can say that can't nobody take away from her is that Nicole Franzo is a winner and she's going to be sitting. She might, might. Be sitting in the final two. That's it. 
Anyway, again, let me tell y'all what's going on tomorrow. It is the finale, you already know, on Charles Warren's channel. That's kind of a tongue twister too. <laughs> On his YouTube channel, we are going live. I got to get with him to see if we're going live an hour before or 30 minutes before. But before Big Brother, we're doing drinks and we're going to go live. We're going to talk about what we think may happen in the finale. We're going to talk about who we're rooting for, what we think may happen if so-and-so wins, so-and-so wins. You know, all of that breakdown, just... A preview of what we think may happen and we're gonna have drinks we're gonna have us a good time then we're going to watch the episode directly after the episode we're going live again hopefully we're gonna be a little bit lit a little bit turned like I said Angie working from home so she can get a little a little bit turned you still got to get up and work from home the next day but I ain't got to drive nowhere <laughs> so we just gonna have a good time and, and we're going to discuss what actually happened on the episode and say our two cents and move on and move on. They are already casting for the next season. <sighs> I'm still going to watch. Y'all know I'm watching the shit. And I'm sitting back waiting on the challenge. I'm waiting on Survivor to do whatever they're getting ready to do. I do watch The Amazing Race. I love The Amazing Race. But to me, The Amazing Race is not a reviewable show it's not enough drama to review and what else am I reviewing right now ready to love I start reviewing the Potomac girls because it's <sighs> I'm waiting on Netflix I'm waiting on Netflix I don't understand Netflix should have had about two or three seasons of the circle already set and ready to go because that the circle is a pandemic friendly show Everybody's sitting in their own apartment. You don't interact, touch, nothing with nobody. You can do a virtual reunion. They ain't got to eat dinner together. And eat, they could eat dinner together if everybody's in quarantine and is negative. The final five could still have their dinner together. And do a, and you can do a virtual reunion. The whole show is virtual. I don't understand why... Why we, we could have been had season two and you could have had season three and four shot like that. I don't know what Netflix waiting on. The Circle was a huge success. Success. Everybody was watching it. I was doing my reviews. Everybody was watching the reviews. Everyone, look, why? What is Netflix doing? Love is Blind, I understand. That was good. Love is Blind was good. That was a good show. I can understand why we ain't had it. But I don't even understand that. Y'all could have been dead. Love is blind too. Anyway, let's get off of this. Um, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. And get in the comments and let me know what we should drink. We doing margarita spray day vine, Moscato for a mellow tip. Or we going to all the way turn and have some crown apple and Sprite. <laughs> anyway, I'll see y'all tomorrow night. <laughs> Bye. Like, comment, share. Bye.